Hey guys, it's me, Holly Madison. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm finally doing this video that a bunch of you guys have asked for. You wanted to know how, and I'm, of course I'm filming the intro at the very end of this video and I'm just now noticing how messy my closet is, forgive me. Anyway, so I wanna do this video where I do my makeup just like I did 10 to 15 years ago when I was on the show Girls Next Door. You guys asked what products I use and of course a lot of those products are outdated. And oddly enough, I have a lot of them because when I buy something I use regularly, I tend to buy like three to five of them at once. I don't know if I'm like stocking up for the apocalypse or what I'm doing, but you know, luckily for me now, I have some leftover makeup from back in the day. And I also thought it would be kind of funny if I did like a half and half, like a half base, like how I did it then and how I did it now to see if there's a difference, which I didn't do this time because I really was genuinely interested to see if I would like my old makeup styles if I brought them back, which surprisingly, I like some of the products way more than I thought I would. And I might bring them back into my everyday routine now. Um, but yeah, if you want to see me do a half face video, let me know in the comments because that sounds kind of fun for me for some reason. Also, a few other things before I start, just so you know, this makeup I'm doing was the makeup I did from like 2005 to 2009, roughly. And back then, the makeup world was so different. There were not beauty YouTubers, like the average person didn't really do a lot of makeup. Like the beauty industry was so different. So when I say I did my makeup a certain way, I feel like back then I was a little more obsessed and a little more like picky about makeup than most people were. And how I learned how to do makeup, and I think Tati said she learned the same way too, was there was this makeup artist named Alexis Vogel and she did like Pamela Anderson's makeup and she did all the Playmates for a while. And that's what I wanted to look like. I used to see like Playboy commercials on TV because they used to have TV commercials <laughs> when I was a kid. And I would see like Anna Nicole Smith and all the playmates. I thought they were so pretty and I wanted to look like that. So when Alexis came out with her own like makeup line, it was like a kit you could order off of TV from like an infomercial. And it came with like a video where she taught you how to do your makeup. So that's where I learned all this. And this look right here might look like by today's standards, it looks kind of natural to me compared to a lot of things I see with like highlighter and like super heavy contouring and like giant lashes but back then nobody did any of that so this was considered a lot of makeup like everybody used to talk about me wearing so much makeup i think by today's standards this is like kind of a light look like, like not totally natural not a no makeup makeup look but a lot more natural than you know a lot of the glam looks you see today but just so you know just backstory this was considered like a lot of makeup back then what else did I want to say before I start? Um, this hair you're seeing here, I tried to do it as similar as possible to how I would do it back when I was on the show. And I use a wig. I mean, it's not a wig, it's a fall. It like clips right here. It's like a half wig. So it's kind of supposed to blend into your hair. And we were filming almost every day and I just didn't want to do my hair every day. So I just threw a wig on over it and only had to do my bangs. But anyway, now that I've given you the backstory, let's get into the look. So here is some of the makeup I used to use and you will notice there's a lot of MAC here. It's pretty MAC heavy. And the reason behind this is back in the day, MAC was like the makeup brand. Like, yeah, there were luxury makeup brands. You could go get your Chanel lipstick and stuff, but like MAC was considered like the nice makeup brand. There weren't a lot of those mid-level makeup brands we have today, like Tarte and I don't know. I don't know what else. Anyway, like MAC was the nice makeup back then. So you'll notice I have a lot of it. So what I'm starting off with is the Cinema Secrets. And I'm using this little wedge sponge because that's what we used back in the day. They didn't really have the beauty blenders that um, are egg shaped like they do now. Those weren't popular. I have scabs on my hand because I fell down <laughs> and I scraped my hand. I look like I'm wearing like a Hannibal Lecter mask right now. I'm gonna have to take a break in the middle of this video because a friend of mine is having a Zoom birthday party. So I'm gonna pop downstairs and do that and then I will be back to finish my makeup. So we'll see what I end up with. We'll see what I show up to the Zoom looking like with a half face of makeup. So I have to do my full neck too because this color of foundation is so different from my natural skin tone. I was picking up this color because it matched my tan at the time. I didn't get spray tans back then. I just tanned naturally out in the sun, but I always made sure I had a hat on or my face was in the shade. 
I never really exposed my face or neck to the sun too much. So when I got all done up, I'd want to like match the skin tone a little bit. So here we are. And as you can see, um, this foundation is so full coverage. It's kind of already done a lot of the under eye work. I just need to camouflage my botched under eye filler that I tried, which should that be a story for another time? So for powder, I used one of the powders I still use today, Cody Air Spun. It's just a drugstore classic. I always bought it because I thought the box was so cute because they still use the old artwork from the 1930s and I thought it was pretty. And it's just a really great basic setting powder. It's translucent. It mattifies a little bit. When I did my makeup back in the day, I would always do like the face part, then the eyes, then the lips. But I'm looking so crazy right now and I have to go do this zoom that I kind of want to do like brows and lips so I look a little more. So for lips, the lip liner I used most often was MAC Spice, which I still use today. And I would overdraw my top lip just a shade, like just right over the ledge, not super far over. You don't want to look crazy. I'm going to look crazy right now, but we'll fix this. Just line the outside and then kind of blend the color on your way in. Somebody's outside making a weird noise. Okay, so lipstick, my, I didn't always use lipstick. It was always, always lip liner and lip gloss, not necessarily lipstick. But when I used lipstick, I would use, my favorite was NARS, what was it called? Dolce Vita. And because I'm not as prepared as I thought I was going to be, I can't find it anywhere. So I just found something in my drawer that kind of matches. This is a Maybelline 235 Warm Me Up. This is what the color kind of looks like. And I would just dab a little bit of lipstick on. Not all the way out to the edge where the liner is because I feel like it lasts a little bit longer if you just let the liner sit and don't really go too crazy with the lipstick. And then my favorite, favorite gloss I used all the time was Bobbi Brown Petal number three. They stopped making this for a while and I was so bummed. I never had to go without because I always had a stockpile of it that lasted for like years and years. But there was a good period of time where they didn't make this color anymore and I was like, what am I going to do? Another favorite at the time was MAC Purr. Everybody used that. So back in the day, I didn't use any kind of brow gel to set my brows. You're looking at me and you're saying, what brows? What brows do you have to set? Well, I swear there's a few hairs up there. <laughs> and I didn't use a brow gel and I almost can't not reach for a brow gel. It kind of like makes me cringe to think about doing my brows without using a brow gel. But the pencil I used was Latte by Damone Roberts. And it's funny because back then people had pencil thin brows. That was what was in style. So I would draw my brows a little bit, not even as big as I draw them now, but I would draw them in a little bit. And that was like not the usual around like the women I was hanging around with. So um, I felt like I was drawing my eyebrows on so much bigger than everybody else's, but by today's standards, it's like nothing. But I always wanted a little bit bigger brows because I feel like the tiny brow thing really ages people. But back then, like, all the women who were trying to be in Playboy, they had kind of grown up, like, loving Pamela Anderson and wanting to be Pamela Anderson. And she had always had those pencil, pencil thin brows. So that's what everybody was doing. See, I'm drawing them on just out of habit. I'm drawing them on even probably thicker than I would have back then. So I need to calm down. And I would do my brow a little bit more angular than I did now. And I was taking a cue from this makeup book by Kevin O'Coin that they used to sell in malls back in the day, back when we did malls. And, and he would have this chart of different eyebrows through the years. And of course, I wanted the Marilyn Monroe brow and hers was very like angular and curvy at the same time. So that's what I would try to do. But now I look back on old pictures and I find that when I'd smile, like my brow would go down a little bit and it would look really angular, almost like the end of the brow was going so I don't do that anymore. It's hard for me to even draw it on the way it was because I'm so 
used to now trying to go for like, like I don't have a fox eye done or anything like that, but I try and go a little bit in that direction, like gel up my brow hair and then kind of make it as far up as I can go without looking crazy. But I'm trying to do like the angular down. It's hard for me to even do. It's like out of my muscle memory. Just so angular and like devilish looking. I mean, I think this is pretty much how I did my brow. Oh my God, the shape I used to do, it's just crazy. You're probably looking at it like it doesn't look that different, but to me it looks so different. Yeah, I think this, I think this was my brow. I think, I think this was what I was doing. But I thought I had like big, thick, luscious brows by the standards back then because everybody else was like pencil, just like one stroke and that was it. Okay, what's the last thing I wanna do before I take a break for my Zoom? We we're supposed to dress up for the Zoom like naughty or nice holiday and I'm like, all my costumes are in Vegas. So the concealer I used, today I used Tarte Shape Tape like most other people who've discovered it. We love it. It's the bomb. Why am I talking like 2005? Okay, so anyway, the concealer I used back in the day was Laura Mercier, and this is Secret. So the concealer I used back in the day was Laura Mercier, and this is Secret Camouflage SC2, and they still make it today. You can see there's like two different colors. There's like a peachier tone and then kind of a more topish yellow undertone. I don't remember what brand of brushes I used. I don't think it was anything special really. It was probably just like some things I picked up at the drugstore. But this Dose of Color Concealer Brush is very similar in shape to what I used to use to put on my concealer. I'm liking what my lips look like with this combo. I feel like they look bigger. Sometimes I look back on my pictures from 2005 and I didn't have big lips by any means, but sometimes from certain angles I'll look and it looks like my upper lip is almost looks a little bit fake because it's very rounded and it wasn't at all. I never had any lip injections, but I was like, what was I doing? I think it's just because I was wearing so much gloss on my upper lip that it kind of made it pop because I don't wear as much gloss today as I did back then. In fact, I'm gonna pile more on just to be authentic to the time period. And the MAC Purr that I mentioned, I think really makes lips pop as well. It's just crazy to like remember a time when I didn't need that much concealer. Like I remember I would be very painstaking with my makeup. I felt like I had to look a certain way and look perfect all the time. So I'd sit there with my little mirror and like try and camouflage like the tiniest tear trough that you have when you're like 22, <laughs> like as if it was a big deal. And now I'm like, I look like I got punched in the face. So I kind of mix the two colors and like dab it on the inner corner of my eye. See that brightens it up a little bit, but it's also very obvious I have concealer on. So I'm gonna have to go with my makeup sponge and use like the remnants of the foundation to kind of tap over it and blend a little bit. And then here we go to botched filler eye that I can't get rid of. I'm so mad. Don't do under eye filler, guys. I'll go in with a little of the Cody Airspun I used to use just to set everything in place. Does this look better than the shape tape? It's hard for me to tell just like looking in the monitor and the mirror. Sometimes you have to see yourself throughout the day in like many different lightings just to see. Cause do you ever like put foundation on in front of your makeup mirror and then you walk into another room and you're in front of a mirror with just daylight and you're like, holy cow, I forgot like this whole spot over here. I do. But I'm going to save contour until after this Zoom party so I can talk about how I used to contour and I will see you guys then. I am back from the super fun Zoom baking party and I'm ready to do contour. Now contour wasn't really a mainstream thing back in the day. At least nobody I knew was doing it. It was more of a thing in the drag community and maybe if you were like 
a really special like movie makeup artist or something like that but nobody was really doing it and I learned how to do it out of a book called Be Marilyn which is written by a drag queen who was dressing up as Marilyn Monroe and I thought it was really cool because I wanted to make my nose look smaller and my jawline a little more defined and what I would use to contour which is not what I would use now but I used to use this bronzer Guerlain terracotta and I cleaned off that same dose of color concealer brush I used for my concealer to do the contour and I would just put some bronzer on and kind of carve out a thinner nose make my nose shorter by making the tip darker. So this makes my nose look a little smaller. And then I have this contour brush. Although I was probably using like a blush brush back then. And I would just contour like the edge of my jaw. I'm not sure this really affected my face very much, but it was what I would do. And then I would do my neck just to make my neck like recede into the background a little bit. So to continue adding color to my face, I would use a lot, a lot of blush because I just love a lot of blush. And I always use MAC Dolly Mix. They don't make this anymore. It's like a hot rose pink, very hot pink. And I would take my blush brush, just like go crazy on the apples of the cheek and the side of the cheek. Just really make the blush pop. And now we can move on to eyes. So the three eyeshadow colors I used the most back in the day were these individual little MAC colors. <laughs> I can't hold them up, sorry, all at once. The first one I would use for my brow bone is called White Frost. I have no idea if they make these anymore. If they do, I will link them below. So use like a tiny brush to put the white on my brow bone. I'm surprised at how much I'm loving this full coverage foundation, by the way. I forgot how well it just sat on my skin. I think maybe I got turned off to full coverage because I was using other liquid ones and maybe it would like settle into creases on my face when my face moved or like not cover pores very well. But like I'm not even wearing a pore concealer, not a pore concealer, a pore primer like I usually do today and I'm not having issues with pores. I just think this Cinema Secrets foundation is probably way better than I remembered it. I think it's probably one of those things that I like took for granted and I'm just like, I don't really need this anymore. It's kind of hard to get. It's not always in stock on Amazon. So I'm gonna do something else. And then I just kind of forgot about it. So the middle shade I used for my crease was Paradisco by MAC. It's like this peachy orange color with a little bit of shimmer. We'll just do that all through my crease. Whoa, this color is bringing me back, guys. And my face has always been very like oily and shiny. So even back in the day, I was using like the MAC blotting papers like crazy. And since I've been in this look for over an hour now, since I took the break, I'm just gonna blot a little bit. I've just always constantly, I've always had a shiny face. Like even in middle school, I used to have to put powder on my face every time in between classes. And I wasn't even really wearing makeup. It was just like, I needed that powder. So then to finish off the eyeshadow, I take an angled brush and I use this brown color from MAC called Mulch. It's kind of a vaguely shimmery brown, dirt brown color, hence the name. Oh, I'm so I'm so muscle memory, like I was trying to do the shadow under the eyes so that I do now, but I don't do that. And I would do kind of like a freehand cat eye. For liquid eyeliner, I used the MAC liquid eyeliner and this was the one piece of makeup I'm missing that I thought I had stocked up but I didn't. So I pulled out this random Revlon Color Stay Skinny I had in a drawer because this is what the MAC bottle looks like. I feel like a lot of drugstore brands copied the MAC. And the applicator is different than the MAC one. The MAC one is shorter and firmer, but I'm gonna 
do my best and I would just line the upper part of my eye. I wouldn't do a cat eye or a wing. I was just kind of creating this base to like put my false eyelash on. I felt like I needed that. So for mascara, I think I just used like a black mascara from MAC, but it doesn't really matter. I was always more dependent on just my false lashes, not so much the mascara. You can use any black mascara to just get your eyes. And I would always get the inner corners of my eyes because the way I put false lashes on, and if you want to see how I do that, I did a whole video on it. I'll link it below. I cut them so the inner corner isn't really present. So I have to like depend on my own lashes there. And I don't think I ever really did much with my lower lashes back then. I'm really bummed because one of the products I used that I wanted to show you guys that I went and tracked down, they still sell it, is an inner lid eyeliner called Baby Eyes by Paula Dorf. It's just like a light color eyeliner that really makes your eyes pop extra. And I would use that during the day. And at night, if I was going for a smokier look, I would use like the Anastasia Deep Black Pencil Liner. And I'm gonna have to use that because I cannot find that Polydorf pencil anywhere. I've been having these weird experiences lately where I've been losing things like crazy. And I'm not usually like that. I'm usually really organized and I don't know what's behind it. I think part of it is because I go back and forth between LA and Las Vegas because I live both places. But I didn't, I didn't want to put off this video because it's one you guys keep asking for and I keep saying, I've been saying for months, I'm going to do it as soon as I have all the products together. And I just keep losing like one of the products and it's just, you know. Maybe if I do that half face video where I do half my face then and half the face now, I'll finally have all my products together. Now, ordinarily, what I would have done back then is used my Ardell Demi Wispy strip lashes, you know, put them on like I do in the video I'm going to link below how I do false lashes. I still do strip lashes the same way now as I did back then. But right now, my eyelash extensions are full enough that I feel like I have the look I'd be going for. So I feel like putting extra on wouldn't necessarily do anything except like ruin the lashes I have now. So I think I'm gonna keep it like this. And my final step for what I used to do back then is I used to use what the makeup artist Alexis Vogel called a chubby pencil. This one is from MAC, it's called Gentle Lentil. And then I love this one from Lorac called Blue Topaz. And I would use this if I'm wearing blue contacts. And this goes on really, really smoothly. This doesn't go on as smoothly, but what I would do is line underneath just like the outer third of my under eye. You know, I don't love what this one is doing because what I loved about the ones I used to use is they were really shimmery. And the one I would use most of the time that was kind of like an orangey brown color, Alexis Vogel herself made it. She had a makeup line. And of course I don't have that now. They don't make it. And it just adds like a sparkly like pop to your under eye and kind of helps give it like this almond doe eye shape because it really like pushes your eye up a little bit, gives it that illusion. I mean, I think I'm good. I think this is what I did. I think this is kind of what I used to look like a little bit. So let me see if I have one of the hair pieces I used to use or something similar and we'll see if we can do kind of a hair look to go with this. I'll be right back. Okay guys, I think I found her. I think this is it. This is my hair circa like 2005 to 2009. It's a fall, it's a partial wig. So it has this comb thing and you would kind of clip it in like right here and then use your own hair to like camouflage. Unfortunately, my hair now is a little darker than it was then. So it's not going to completely match, but I'm just gonna brush it out just a little bit. because This has been sitting in my closet. This isn't as old. This isn't one I actually used back in the day, but it's the same exact brand. I think I got this for Halloween for some costume or other. You have to be careful when you brush them. I have it down on my lap brushing it right now because you don't want it to completely lose the curl. It's not real hair. It's plastic. So now my hair is much longer than it was back in the day. So the fall isn't going to cover my hair. It's not something I would wear out now. So I'm just going to throw it behind my back to kind of give you guys the effect of what it would look like. And I kind of do like a part where like a headband would go. 
I take the clip, I clip it in like that. And then there's a clip in the back too. And you kind of like pull it back down to the bottom of your head and clip it like right where your neck meets your head and it'll stay there. Okay, I don't know if I can make this blend because like I said, my hair color isn't the same. And like I have roots now, I didn't have roots back then. So to make this look work, you need bobby pins. And I take my real hair, not quite my bangs, but right behind my bangs. I'll take this and brush it back to like cover the fall so you don't see any of the clip thing. And it looks kind of funny now because like my roots are just not matching the rest of the hair. But back then my hair would have been all one solid color. It was like solid platinum, which I don't like doing now. I tried it recently a couple years ago because I wanted to dye the bottom of my hair hot pink and I just wanted it to be really clean looking. So I'm like, I don't want the roots. I want to go all platinum again. And I ended up hating it because when it's all one color like that and it's that flat white platinum and my hair is pretty thick on top, it just look, it has the illusion of like not moving. Like in real life, it reminds me of like a Brillo pad. Not because it feels that way, but it just kind of looks that way because it's just so, the color is so flat. Oh my gosh. The roots are really like ruining the effect though. Like if I'm going to post this picture and be like, here's how I did my girls next door makeup. It's like, girl, you ain't even blonde enough. You're not that same girl. And then I would kind of like part my bangs on the side like so. I wish I had like a Halloween spray so I could just spray like white. Let's see what happens. How am I going to make this look right? Maybe I'll just kind of. Since I'm not going anywhere, just kind of let it sit. So this is why I waited so long to do the video. I was like, I'm going to do my hair all platinum, but I hate doing it. Sometimes people on social media, they'll leave a comment and it's usually guys and like, get your roots done. I'm like, no, these roots are very much here on purpose. It is calculated. So I think that's it. Here she is. This is my 2005 makeup look. I don't feel like it looks that different from what I do today. But I love the Cinema Secrets foundation. Like I stopped using this for so long because I just stopped loving heavy foundation. And I thought, well, this is like a cream. It's going to be even heavier than these liquid ones that I don't really love. But it's been on my face a few hours now, like I said, since I took that break. And it's not like giving me any problems anywhere. It covered up like my bruised looking under eyes without very much concealer on top. And I might start wearing it more. I really like it. Even though it looks so weird putting it on because it's a completely different color than my face. But look at you know. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Thanks for watching. And please let me know in the comment section what type of video you'd like to see next. I'll see you next time. Bye.